Hey folks, and welcome to our next lesson. We are skipping ahead the tiniest bit here. We're skipping all of chapter 9. So we're starting chapter 10. We're going to start with section 10-2, which is actually really similar to a section we saw way back when in chapter like 2 or 3 dealing with antiderivatives. All right, so before you watch any further, read the section, do the reading check, and then let's begin. See what happens. The big idea here is that distance is different than displacement. Distance is the total amount of distance you've covered. Displacement is the net amount. So for instance, if I walked in a giant circle and I started where I began, my distance would just be the distance that I've traveled around the circle. My displacement would be zero because I started where I began. That's incredibly important. And we're going to see that in this next example. So, first things first, graph it out. I know that by plugging in, this has the point 0, comma, negative 2, 1, comma, 0, 2, comma, 12, 3, comma, 40. I'm just going to sketch that out. Now, the graph does other things in other places, but we don't need to worry about that right now. And this graph gives us the answer to A. The velocity is negative from 1 to 0, not including 0, and it's positive from 0, not including 0, all the way up to 3. Cool. So, next step, we want to figure out the displacement. Now, displacement is just where it is relative to where it started. So that can just be an integral. It doesn't have to be broken up in anything, so just from 0 to 3, what did the velocity do? Well, let's just set it up. Cool, and now I'm just going to go over to an integral calculator and get my answer. So this is the integral calculator which we have in the resource section. Hopefully this is not news and everyone has already seen it before. So I'm just going to do t to the third plus 2t squared minus t minus 2. Double check, it does that. Plug in my integrals. Well, I want this to be from 0 to 3. You can see it's flashing over here because I just want to plug it in. Oh, it's giving me an error because I put in an x. So you know what? I'm just going to change all these to x's. That's perfectly all right. Doesn't change a darn thing. Cool. Hit enter. Oh, it's working. Cool. La, da, 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 da. So that's our answer. 27.75. 27.75. That's the total displacement. You might think that using an integral calculator is cheating. I'm telling you for my class it's not. If your later college professors tell you it is, well, listen to them. It's their classroom. Now we need to find the distance. The issue here is that the distance is given by a negative velocity here and a positive here. So we just need to break it up into two different integrals. From 0 to 1 of the function plus from 1 to 3 of the same function. If we don't split it up, what's going to end up happening is some of the negative, some of the distance covered here when the velocity is negative will cancel out when the velocity is here. And to just kind of give an idea about what this looks like, this part represents that velocity, and this represents here. And we're just going to pop over to the integral calculator and get our answer. Cool thing is, if you haven't closed this down already, all I need to change is my bounds. So instead of from 0 to 3, I'm just going to do 0 to 1 and hit enter. And that's going to be approximately negative 1.583 repeating. Well, all I have to do now is change the other bounds. So that's from 1 to 3. Oh, I zoomed in way too farther. And this is 29.3 repeating. We're just going to use those. So I went and added those two things in. Now. This is negative. 
if you've learned nothing else in the years of my class, it's that distance can't be negative. So we're pretty much just going to ignore that negative and add these things together already. And when we do, if we add them together and ignore the fact that we have a negative, we're going to have approximately 30.9 feet. That's the distance. Cool. And you can see that there's a distance. There's a difference between distance and displacement. They're not the same number. They'll only be the same number if you never turn around or retrace your steps. So that was our first example. Hopefully you're getting strong vibes from the past here and you're remembering a lot of this stuff. Just in case, let's do a second example together. Let's take a look at another one. Take a second, pause the video, write it in. Okay, we're given acceleration and we're given an initial velocity. Remember, this is how distance, velocity, and acceleration are connected. To go from distance to velocity, you take the derivative. To go from velocity to acceleration, you take the derivative. To go from acceleration to velocity, you take the integral. To go from velocity to distance, you take the integral. So here we're given acceleration, given by this formula, and something with a velocity. I'm going to go from acceleration to velocity, that's the integral. So the velocity is going to be equal to the integral of 2 cosine da 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 d of t. Well, that's just equal to 2 sine of t plus c. Cool. Now, they tell us that the x, well, initial velocities of time is 0, and that's our y. So we just plug it in. Time is 0 equals 2 sine of 0 plus c, and we know this has to equal negative 2, because that's that velocity. Well, that just means that c is equal to negative 2, sine of 0, 0. Cool, we have our velocity formula. Velocity is just 2 sine of t minus 2. Now, displacement is just going to be from velocity back again with an integral, and we can do that now because we have c. So, displacement at time t is just going to give, be given by 0 to 2 pi of the formula we just found. Cool. Plug it into an integral calculator. I'm not going to do that again because you've already seen it a bunch. And it's going to be negative 12.5663, and it keeps going on. Now, this is in the units of feet. Cool. Now, distance is just going to be the absolute value of that. You might want to graph this out and just make sure that it's not going to be doing anything funny like dipping under the axis again, but you could also use some of your trig and know that cosine from 0 to 2 pi, and you're going to be all right with that. So our distance is just equal to the absolute value of 2 sine t minus 2 dt, which is going to be this exact same thing except positive. So 12.5663 blah 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 blah. Again, it's in feet. Okay, so we've seen two examples there. If you're getting strong vibes of stuff we did earlier in the year, great. If not, that's okay too. So go on with the rest of the agenda, finish that classwork, finish that homework. You don't have unlimited time for it, so please make sure you're doing it on time so I can give you feedback. Thanks, folks. Have a great day. Stay safe, and I'll talk at you soon.